Hi, my name is Robert Harriman. I am the Infectious Disease Examiner, and I'm going to start a series that I will do sporadically called the Infectious Disease Info Video. And the, the first one I will ever do will be on Giardia intestinalis, or what many of you know as Giardia lamblia. This is the most commonly diagnosed and most economically important parasite of humans in the United States. It is the cause of giardiasis in humans. And the interesting thing about the trophozoa that is unique among all protozoa being that it's the only one that's bilaterally symmetrical. Geography. Giardiasis is found worldwide. It's found in every region of the United States. It's more prevalent in warmer climates than in cool climates, and it's more common in children than it is in adults. Morphology. On this life cycle chart, there are drawings of the two stages of Giardia, the trophozoite and the cyst. If you take a look at the trophozoite, this is the motile feeding stage. It is pear-shaped, about 12 to 15 microns in length, two nuclei which kind of look like eyeballs, median bodies that kind of look like a smile, four pairs of flagella, and a ventral sucking disc which is used to attach to the host mucosal epithelium. The cyst is the infective stage. It is oval or ellipsoid in shape, approximately 10 to 14 microns in length. The mature cyst will have up to four nuclei and the immature cyst will have two. Median bodies are also present. If we take a look at the life cycle, the cysts are resistant infective forms of the parasite. Both the cysts and the trophs can be seen in the feces as a diagnostic stage. The cysts are very hardy and can survive for months in water. People get infected by ingestion of the cyst by contaminated water, food, or the fecal oral route, hands to mouth, etc. In the small intestine, the cyst exist releasing two trophozoites. The trophozoites multiply by binary fission and remain in the small intestine freely or attach to the mucosa. The troph begins to insist as it moves closer to the colon. The cysts are, the, are infective when they're passed in stool, thus person-to-person -person transmission is possible. Disease and symptoms. There is an incubation period of approximately one to two weeks before symptoms appear. Approximately 50% of infected people are asymptomatic. Mild disease. In cases of mild disease, mild diarrhea with spontaneous recovery in six weeks is typical. Acute infection. This is characterized by a sudden onset of explosive, foul-smelling, watery diarrhea. There will be no blood or pus in the diarrhea. It's also characterized by intestinal gas, which is also known as purple burp, cramps, nausea, fatigue, and bloating. Untreated cases may last for weeks to months with varying intensities and remissions. Chronic infections of giardiasis are characterized by steatorrhea. This is an excess of fat in the feces. Uh, this is caused by the malabsorption of fat because of the attachment of the giardia. Stools are characteristically greasy, frothy, and they may appear to float. Anorexia, nausea, weight loss, and weakness are common symptoms of chronic infection. This is a main cause of failure to thrive syndrome 
in many parts of the developing world. Diagnosis. Characteristically, it is by finding the trophozoites or the cyst in stool specimens. They can be found in direct wet mounts or in concentrations. And this picture is a cyst seen in a sample with the addition of Lugol's iodine to help see the internal structures. This next picture is a Giardia trophozoite also in an iodine stained wet mount. If you were to see a tr actual trophozoite in a fresh stool within 30 minutes, um, the motility will appear as a falling leaf. This next photograph is a Giardia cyst under oil immersion in a trichrome stain. And this next photograph is the trophozoite stage, also in a trichrome stain. Because of sporadic shedding of cysts, repeat stool samples may be required for diagnosis. Another way, though rarely used anymore, is the enterotest string test. And here, the patient would take a gelatin capsule which contains nylon string and a little weight. And they swallow the capsule and attach the free end of the string to their cheek. After four to six hours or possibly overnight incubation, the capsule will dissolve in the intestine and the string will be retrieved. And at this point you will take the string and wipe off the bile stained mucus from the duodenum and place that on a slide and look for the um, parasite. This procedure is rarely used anymore. Other tests that can be done are the direct fluorescent antibody. This has high sensitivity and high specificity. Um, the downside of it is, depending on your laboratory, it requires a fluorescent microscope and there is no permanent stain slide to archive. There is also enzyme immunoassays and this is for the detection of the Giardia antigen. And this is useful for screening large number of stools and because of the intermittent way um, that cysts are present in stools, it may be easier to detect Giardia through the detection of the antigen. The treatment of Giardia. In the United States, metronidazole is the treatment of choice, also known as flagell. Tinidazole is also an option. Epidemiology. Person-to-person -person fecal oral route is the most common uh, way of transmission in the United States particularly in children, daycare centers, for example. The prevalence of daycare children having Giardia is much higher than same-age children that are not in daycare. You can also get Giardia infection via contaminated water or food that was washed with contaminated water. Venereal transmission is also possible through an anal oral sex uh, route. There are several animal reservoirs um, that have Giardia. The, the list is quite long, but a few of them are dogs, cats, raccoons, and probably the one that's implicated most, beavers. And this is particularly true for those that are hikers and backpackers that stop to drink stream water and down the stream may be a beaver dam and you may get infected with Giardia. Thank you and uh, this is the conclusion of the first infectious disease info vid.